is my second slide, examples of linear transformations. Uh, first example, uh, you, can, you, can, you can find a simpler example than this. It's the mapping, which take R into R, one-dimensional linear space over field of scaleless real numbers into another one-dimensional real space. The one which just scales a number by fixed coefficient A. This is a typical example of a linear transformation. So A is a real number. X is also a vector, I can say, even though it's a real number. But now R is considered as a vector space in the domain and the codomain. So it's very easy to check by this is a linear transformation. If you apply this to a sum of two vectors, X and Y, I, I use vector, I, I say vectors, but effectively these are numbers. This is, oh, well, it's supposed to be a, actually, it's a typo. Oops. I'll fix this in a second. Like this. And this one individually. And this one individually simply f of x plus f of y. So the first property of the linear transformation is satisfied. Similar one. Again, there's the same type of present here. Uh, similar one, if you scale a vector, I'll fix this typo. By lambda, that's how you... That's what your linear transformation is. You can use the associative law of multiplication, and that's how it will be. Let me just fix the typo. So if you apply your linear transformation to a scaled vector, that's my linear transformation. By associative law, you can change the order of the factors like this, and that is the scaled application of linear transformation. Every time you verify the properties, these two simple properties of a linear transformation, there will be something you, you, will, you will refer from your earlier knowledge. Here, for instance, I use the, the arithmetic knowledge of the, I mean, the knowledge about the arithmetic multiplication. It is subject to distributive law, and it is subject to the associative law. And it's your job to make it clear what exactly you're referring to in your argument, whichever linear transformation you argue in the questions you solve. So this is true for any X and Y, this is true for any lambda and for any X. Okay, second example here is again a mapping from R to R, but this time it's this mapping, and that explains the reason for the typo, because here was 2X plus 1. This is an example of, we know it's a linear function from the, from the elementary school, but this is an example of not a linear transformation, because one of the properties we established in the slide before, they are not satisfied. For instance, the zero vector, is taken to number one, which is not a zero vector, and that's why, even though it's a linear function, it's not a linear transformation. Another example, again, it's a little bit artificial example, but it's still the example which shows you how to test things. Uh, it's again a mapping between R and R, and that's the one which takes x to x square. It's a reasonable mapping. It's quite, quite legitimate, legitimate mapping, but it's, again, not a linear transformation because it fails this property we established in the slide before. If I take a negative over vector, negative 1, that will be 1, which is different from negative 1, negative of f1. That's, just, that's the second property from the last slide, which is failed, and that's why, in this case, this is also not a linear transformation. Now, fourth example I have, this is less artificial, actually, that's a quite natural example, one of the main, I'd say one of the principal examples of the linear transformation, uh, and quite hard example, actually. Uh, before I can give you that, I have to, oh, well, it's, it's like this. Mm. Mm, actually, I'm, yeah. <clears throat> Before I give you that, I have to explain you this notation. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this notation before. If someone writes something like this, f comes from C1R, f comes from C1R, effectively this means, in the plain English, you basically say that f is the one-time differentiable function, and the derivative is a continuous. So it's one-time continuously differentiable function. f, continuously differentiable function on the real line. This is simple, well, that's the abbreviation for this longer statement. Or this symbol itself, it just represents the collection of all such functions. So the linear transformation I'd like to present. 
I'll present it in a second. That's the one which takes, which takes every continuously differential function and take it to continuous function. This notation you should know. So C of R, it's a class of all functions, all, sorry, class of all continuous functions, and C1 of R, it's the class of all continuously differentiable functions. So my linear map T in example 4, it will take a vector from here. This is a vector space, as much as this vector space. Two different vector spaces, the main and the codomain. You take a vector from here, effectively a function, and it assigns to that vector a function from here. And effectively, we take a derivative. So derivative, in this setting, it's an example of a linear transformation. We all know that. Here's, here's a justification for that. If I apply my t to a sum of two functions, or two vectors, f plus g, that will give me f plus g dash. We all know, here's my borrowing from the earlier knowledge. We all know that the derivative operation, when applied to a sum, can be applied individually. That's my knowledge from the past, which I use here. I can apply the derivative individually. And each individual f dash and g dash, that's the image of t of f and t of g. That's why the first property of a linear transformation is satisfied for any two continuously differentiable functions. Here's my second verification, t of lambda f. Again, it's dash applied to lambda f function. Again, I borrow some knowledge from the, from the past. I know that if I, if I take a derivative of the function times a scalar, scalar can be factor out like this, and that is the lambda t of f, and that's the second property, verify. It's like this and like this. He is to this equation, and this equation, that's the something we, where we use the knowledge from the past. And that's why this is a linear, linear map.